So now let's take another step. We're shooting 4K, but I want to use that 4K as part of a, an HD project to allow us to, to do what's called punching in or, or zooming in. So let's create a new project. We'll call this a, well, let's call it a 720p project. We could store it anywhere, but I'll store it inside media. Double click the 720p project and just make sure that it is in fact 720p. So we'll change the settings and we'll keep it to that 30 frames a second. Now because I've made a manual change to the project settings, when I edit my clip into the, to the timeline, notice the render bar, it remembers the settings. It doesn't conform the project to match the clip. It conforms the clip to match the project. If I had not changed the project settings before I put the clip in, the project would be conformed to match the video settings of the clip. So it's just a question where you make your, your format changes. Change the project setting before adding media. Media conforms to the project. Add the media to the project and the project will conform to the media. Okay, so we see now, if we go to the project, click on the project, 1280, 720, 30 frames a second. By the way, notice the stereo display here. Final Cut always outputs a stereo image but the iPhone always records mono audio when using the onboard mic. Okay, so now we've got this. Let's, uh, let's edit our second clip in here. And we'll type the letter E. And what the heck, I haven't, never do a demo when nobody has seen the demo before, but let's just try this. Snapping turned on, take this. And should have a flop setting. There we go. So now we're seeing one 4K image running by itself, and now we're seeing two 4K images at the same time see what the problem is. Oh, I see. The flop allows it to flip from one side to the other. If, and the default setting says it flips every half second, goes from the left to the right. I don't want it to keep changing positions. I want to have it stay put. So I just set the changes per minute to zero so that the video would stay put. Now you're looking at two 4K images playing at the same time, which you got to admit is pretty cool. All right, I digress. We now have a 720p, but I want to have this image zoomed in. Well, that's just, this gets too complex. So I'm going to take the razor blade tool and cut here, select this clip. I want to have a close-up down here. Well, this allows me to explain one of my favorite settings inside Final Cut 10. It's toward the bottom. You select the clip, and it's called Spatial Conform. What FIT does is if the image size is not the same size as the project, this will scale the image so all four edges fit inside the frame. This FIT may involve letterboxing on the top and the bottom or a pillar boxing left and right. What fill does is it zooms in the image so that there is no letterboxing and no pillar boxing, but it may involve losing pixels off the left or the right edge. None sets the image to 100% size. That's 100% inside a 720p timeline. So now I can go up to the vertical position and drag this up so I can concentrate just on the, the bottom of the of the spiraling thingus, and now we're looking at it scaled to fit the entire image in the frame, and then we cut to 100%, and we can look at the image as it is zoomed into its native 4K size, and now we're back again. The only problem with punching in like this, which is used a lot, is that your depth of field doesn't change. If you were to zoom in, there'd be a change in depth of field. If you were to dolly the camera forward, the depth of field would change. Punching in gives you a different angle, tight or wide, but it doesn't change depth of field, which may be okay for some things and may drive you nuts for other things. The key, and this is important, look at the computer. When I set this to none, it automatically sets the scale to 
You don't ever want to scale larger than 100% because it creates fat, blurry pixels. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at 4K video, the iPhone 6S, and Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 182. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.